Hey guys, John here. So today's video in Hive 2 is called Ethereal Bells, and you can use these bells for anything <laughs> ethereal. Or you can do something in harmonic minor and kind of make it kind of creepy. Or but yeah, you can do a lot of cool stuff with these sounds. So let's go ahead and remake this bad boy. Okay. So first things first here, we're going to be using a wavetable. And if we click here to the saw wave, we can either select this here if we want to select from wavetable here, or we can go to the wavetable and select it here. Either way, it doesn't really matter. So if we look at our wavetable, we're going to be under the additive category, and this is going to be on bell 16, which is actually a really good wavetable. So additive and then select bell 16. And let's actually target this other one here. So we have this. <laughs> like what the hell? That's not even a bell. Maybe it's like a retro video game or something. I don't know. But anyway, first things what we need to do is bring this up by two octaves and add three voices of unison. So yeah, that's kind of close. All right, but we need to kind of carve this thing out a little bit more. So with that being said, what we need to do is give this LFO a little bit of motion. Right now we can do this stuff here with the one shots and the loops, but I actually wanted to do something with an LFO. So if we look down here to the matrix, we can see the LFO one is modulating the wavetable position of this first oscillator. So with that being said, we can drag and drop this LFO down over here to the position. And if we look at this guy, we can see that the position is, is default manually set by us at 33. So we're gonna basically be starting from here, right? Now with this connection, we're modulating this by an amount of eight. So we can go here and, and bring this up to eight, or we can select the LFO and bring it up like that, depending on how we want to do it, right? So something like that. You're like, what is this? It sounds kind of weird. could be kind of a cool patch, but we're making a bell today. So that's obviously way too fast. So we need to go down here to sync and at 10 seconds. So let's go from gate to sync and then from one over 16 to 10 seconds. Okay, so now we have the timbre of the sound. And what I wanted to do with this guy, it was cool, but I also wanted to have a little bit of extra low end there. And what you can do is if in Hive, if you're using a wavetable and you want a sub oscillator and you want that same wavetable, then what you do is you select this sub here and then under the waveform, you hit like OSC, which is gonna be the same wavetable, but obviously lower. And in this case, one octave lower. But that is way too loud. So we brought this down here to 43. Right, it's a subtle little enhancement there. So we have that. So now we're doing a couple of different things. So now on the cutoff, we're gonna be using the low pass 24 and the cutoff's gonna be at 135. So we can bring that down just a little bit here. And the resonance is gonna be at zero. We don't need any resonance for this guy. And for the mod envelope, we're going 21 for the depth. Now for this envelope here, we're doing a little bit differently. So the attack is one, decay 32. So attack is one default, decay 32. And then our sustain is gonna be zero and release is 62. Now we need to adjust our amp as well. So our attack is gonna be two. Now this is important because, let's actually get this set up first. So attack two, 60. So bring this up by one. And then this is going to be 60 sustain all the way down. And then the release is gonna be 60 so we can bring this guy up. So the reason I say this is important, so this attack is still pretty quick, but the envelopes inside Hive can be very snappy and very fast. It's really good for percussive kind of things, especially if we, if we double click this, we have an, an attack of one, we can bring this all the way down to zero and it's gonna be very, very snappy. Mm -hmm. 
maybe that's something that we like. Um, once I started adding more effects and the compression and all that, I was like, maybe this is a little bit too fast. So that's why instead of doing the default, I just did one more, so up to two. So it's still a quick bell sound, right? Because bells transients are pretty quick, but it's not so snappy to the point where it's kind of distracting. Okay. So we basically have this whole thing going. So now we need to jump in some of the effects. So if you look in our effects here, one of the first things that we have is going to be this EQ. So we turn this on, turn this on and bring this to the top. Now this guy on the, uh, the base we're leaving alone, the mids and the highs, we're doing some changes. So on the mid, it's going to be at 27. So here, and then we're bringing this down at about three DB. This is going to be the stuff here. If I push it, it's kind of just muffly and kind of gross. So just taking this down by three DBs kind of makes the bell a little bit more clear. Okay, so next up, we like that clarity of us. So we're actually pushing some of the highs. Now this is gonna be on 75, which is the default amount. So if we brought this up by 5.5, listen to the top end clarity. Just a little bit there. Kind of a nice little sound there. So moving on from here, next we're gonna start adding the reverb. Now this one is interesting because we're sending it through a reverb and then we're compressing it and then we're delaying it. So it's kind of an interesting signal flow order here. So the reverb pre-delay is gonna be 20, which is default, size is 93. So brought this down just a little bit like that. Let's move this guy over a bit here. So next up we have the Decay 58. So let's bring this up a little bit more like that. Damping 79, so down one from the 80. Tone negative 29, which is a little bit more here. Because we want the reverb, but we don't want the reverb to be so top end ish. Okay, so we have that, and then our width is 75, which I believe is default. And then our mix, we added a little bit more to 47. Okay, so moving on from here, we're doing some compression. So turn our compressor on, and the amount, we're going up to 22. And the out, we're doing two. The low end, you can totally decide to cut that out if you want to. You can take out the sub here. Or you can keep it in or just the volume. That's totally up to you how you want to uh, use that. And then we're going to the delay. So this is going to be a quarter. So one over four here on the left-hand side, which is really nice. So we can independently choose the left and the right. And then the right-hand side is going to be one over four, but it's going to be a triplet. So where the hell are you? There we are. And here the mix is going to be 52. We're not touching the low pass, but the high pass are going to 15. And then the width is going to be all the way. Feedback 25, which is default. And then the diffuse is going to be at 51. So it can be kind of cool. And if you want to do the uh, Halloween thing. Hmm. 
<laughs> but yeah, I think you get the idea of that one here. So not too crazy to make, but the wavetable does sound good, which is a really cool thing I like about Hive is that the the, the interpolation of the wavetable engine inside Hive is probably my favorite as well. And if you want to get a little bit more crazy since we're here, instead of going to crossfade, if we go down to spectral, it's going to sound a little bit nicer. So it's just a little tip of advice there. But yeah, so that's basically how you make these ethereal bells. And like I said, if you play something in a major or more happier key, it's gonna sound more ethereal. Or if you do something kind of in a minor or melodic minor, it can sound a little bit darker. Like something's wrong. <laughs> probably like my playing but anyway so this is ethereal bells if you like this patch and you want to get a copy of it there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours thank you so much for watching hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video